uh, thanks uh, for being here and uh, for having shared uh, your work that uh, is uh, a particular work, I have just to say. Uh, and uh, thanks, Jim, for being here. And uh, uh, I want just to, to start uh, to talk about uh, your permut work. And uh, if you can uh, just uh, give your um, idea what there is, the idea that is behind this project, because it's interesting how you develop it and how this uh, work is accessible to everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate this uh, opportunity to share my work and to talk a bit about it. Um, I don't often elaborate on um, some of my thoughts and ideas behind uh, my work, so this is uh, this is uh, good practice for me. Um, yeah, so it was a response to the change in circumstances because of the pandemic, and my work generally, I I do a lot of performance-based material, and mm -hmm. I do uh, I'm generally focused on music and electronics and software, so working with both hardware and software. Um, and this opportunity uh, came up with uh, Interact Digital Arts. So they had um, gotten some support from uh, the Arts Council, uh, also the LCB Depot, which is mm. an organisation and space based in Leicester. And there was some funding in place um, through uh, Interact Digital Arts to support a number of artists so we did a kind of online exhibition that was the it was an online uh, digital exhibition uh, a showcase of artwork and there were nine artists in total including myself uh, and it was quite a uh, the it, it was quite loose we were allowed to um, to look at a, a variety of uh, different things um, we weren't uh, constrained to any particular topic but because of the situation, um, there, there was generally a theme throughout with regard to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And it was, um, yeah, it was an opportunity for me to, to change how I worked a little bit, to move from uh, live events uh, and, and uh, performance-based material uh, to looking at a kind of online exhibition piece and uh, th this coincided with um, with the the opening of um, the computer arts archive, and uh, there was some talks and other events and things that I was involved in. Uh, and along with that was the exhibition of work. Uh, so the piece that I came up with, uh, permute, the the idea was to look at some of my practices um, and to see how I could find a new way to present my work. So I work a lot with generative systems, um, uh, predominantly software based generative material. Uh, so I, I'd be using um, various different algorithms to, to, to generate uh, sound or image. And the idea was instead of someone seeing a, a fixed piece, a recording of this kind of material, which is how a lot of people would experience or consume this kind of work, or maybe they would experience it without the knowledge of necessarily, or you know, or necessarily knowing that it was a generative piece. Uh, what I wanted to do is just lay that bare and give people an opportunity to um, actually uh, listen to something that was generating in real time. And I was concerned from the beginning about how I could make that accessible to as many people as possible. And also with it being an online archive, uh, the, it was sort of, well, it was obvious to me that it would be a, a kind of web-based piece uh, and presenting it as, a, as a, an artwork in its own right. So the, the visuals and the sound of the piece uh, generated in real time on the device so uh, the uh, the work itself is is a web page uh, that I've coded and when you connect to that page 
it tells your iPad or iPhone or, or your laptop to, to generate the material. And there, there are certain idiosyncrasies yeah. bet between different devices and browsers, but it's generally quite consistent. But it would be different every time anyway. And I like this idea that the experience is different for each individual at, at any one particular time and place. Uh, and that was something that um, I, I, I like the idea of that. And it kind of connects personally with me in terms of uh, impermanence and things not lasting. Yeah. Uh, and this idea that um, that things don't last forever and, and and you can't go back, you can't press rewind, you can't no. you can't skip forwards. It's just happening now. And I, I quite like that. The, the nowness of it, maybe, uh, I don't know, it's a, a little bit sort of zen, maybe. It is curious. When I touch that uh, uh, the screen, sometimes appear just some words, just some letters uh, mm. that uh, I think the word that uh, there is behind is love. I think, uh, I don't know if uh, I found uh, uh, a, a secret code or word uh, uh, that uh, you hide inside this uh, uh, this digital work. Yeah, I think the the uh, the technology people would call that an Easter egg. Uh, but yeah, there there are, there are a limited number of characters that I've used, um, and they could and they do spell out uh, various words because the order in which they are presented yeah. is random. But you are correct in that the word used was love. And one of the reasons for that was um, at the time I was thinking a lot about uh, communication and about how, uh, how things are interpreted by people in different ways. Uh, so I was thinking about that in terms of the piece itself, but I was also thinking about that in terms of words and language and concepts uh, and, and, and I think a, a concept that a lot of people take for granted or a word that people take for granted in terms of its meaning is the word love yeah. and it has very specific meaning for certain people and there's obviously no definite uh, a definition for yeah, love. Exactly. I think there is a correspondence between the work and the, the word, word love. Yeah. yeah. It was uh, so this idea that everyone um, will experience it in a, in a different way. There's a, a kind of personalness to it. And, and, and that goes for the word that I used um, and, and, and the material as well, as well. But it was also just about kind of acknowledging that I'm letting go of it and understanding yeah. that I that I don't have control of over how people interpret things. Mm. And and, and I wanted to sort of acknowledge that by as much as possible trying to let people discover things for themselves and to not give people a set of instructions yeah. for the interaction or uh, or even any words to describe the piece it, other than other than the title itself. The 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 idea is that. I, I just put it out there and yeah. let people make of it what they will. And there's, uh, you know, there's upsides and downsides to that. Some people prefer to be informed when they're looking at things. Um, some people like to approach things in their own way and, and then afterwards, you know, get some more information to maybe interpret what they, what they that, or, or maybe corroborate what they thought and yeah. felt about it and what they took from it. Um, I'm, I'm sort of dreadful in as much as uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't really care too much about explaining things to people because I don't want to take away their yeah. own personal interpretation of it. And one of the things that was quite interesting was noting the interaction. I didn't actually tell people how to interact with it. Yeah. Why don't we kind of uncover it a little bit and maybe I can talk uh, about exactly how that works. Um, because you know the piece is out there now anyway and a lot of people yeah. have had an opportunity to see it and, and think what they want to think about it so um basically any key press any mouse click 
any screen touch at all uh, is, is, is interpreted identically. It does the same thing. There's no significance over the different keys or when in particular you press the screen. And when that happens, a whole set of parameters are randomized mm. and, a, and a new um, a new permutation and a new pattern emerges and you destroy the old one. I was quite interested in that as well. And I've done a few pieces where by creating something, you destroy another thing, which is something I take for granted in the way that I work because I understand the nature of media and materials to the point where I there's a I, I know that I'm destroying things in order to make my creations. I'm using materials up. Um, and I wanted to have that in uh, in in the digital world as well. So maybe that's another kind of Zen sort of ideology coming in there where when you click you go to something new, something's created, but you yeah. also lose the old thing and you can't necessarily return to that. And it was interesting because some people thought that they had more influence over them, over the piece than I had given them. And, <laughs> uh, and even spending more time with the piece, it didn't seem to dissuade them from the fact that, you know, they were operating within an envelope and certain things were just totally random yeah uh but we i guess we kind of look for the significance we kind of look for the pattern so if we want to think that there's more significance to our interaction mm. with the piece then we'll i guess we'll see that but um yeah so the the interaction's quite simple um and partly that was also accessibility i didn't want to make it too complicated in terms mm. Of how people can use the tool, even though that would probably be more um, uh, more capable or expansive. Yeah. Um, and I did make a version of it afterwards, uh, based upon the same algorithm, which allowed people to do some live coding um, in a thing called a JavaScript console, so they could use the web page to actually compose music in a more controlled form. Um, but yeah, I wanted to keep it like ultra simple in terms of interaction mm. so, so you, you basically click and you get a new variation or pattern and and that's it i i really appreciated this work so thank you for uh, for having shared this and uh, now I, I would like just to know better the just your life like uh, artist so digital artist i don't know if uh, this covid affected uh, just your practice as an artist and also if this uh, lockdown that uh, I know that is uh, still uh, <laughs> there is uh, a lockdown uh, still in Leicester if is affecting you like person in your life really so yeah it's it has had quite a considerable impact on uh, the people around me and the uh, family and friends, people who I work with, it's changed a lot of people's focus and perspective. Mm. Uh, and people have had to, um, some people are in really difficult situations. We've lost some people. Um, and going forwards, I think there's a lot of people who are, are going to continue on a totally different path. And we've had to look at some of the things we've been doing uh, in terms of uh, the artwork we've been doing and, and just thinking about how we can change what we do, uh, but partly just to, to be, um, because it's so uncertain, we just don't know. You know we're still in a, in a situation where we don't know if another lockdown, a national lockdown is gonna occur. Yeah. You know, we, we imagine, I mean, for me personally, um, uh, I've had to, my wife has had to continue her work, uh, and I've had to do quite a lot of the childcare. Um, so I've not been able to continue with my work. So, um, most of the week I've got the, the kids now and it's quite difficult at this time to yeah. occupy them because parks are closed. You know, they can't go on the swings. They can't go to an activity or a birthday party or any of the things that they were kind of used to doing. And it's been a big change around for them. And that's had an impact on, on them personally. Um, 
so uh, you know I'm, I'm dealing with that at the same time yeah. so I, I've you know I've had to stop doing a lot of the work that I have been doing and uh, the, there's been the odd project here and there that I've had to tie up or that I was working on prior to lockdown and there's been a couple of opportunities have popped up but you know I, I can't do those things unless it's the weekend or it's yeah. late late at night and the kids are in bed um, so that's been difficult for me personally to juggle uh, and looking at the uh, what we're doing in the future, it, because of this uncertainty, we've had to look at just could we just do something different that doesn't rely on these things. So we're looking at the prospect of cancelling all events going forwards at our space, creative space in, in the city centre, R10. Uh, so there's been a lot of discussion between myself and my colleagues there about um, not doing events anymore. Yeah. Maybe, of like, course. like maybe, you know, for the foreseeable future um, and maybe a bit longer than that, because we, we're going to have to focus our efforts in different things. We, we, I've witnessed um, a lot of friends in the creative industry who've lost jobs or had to close down their businesses. Um, you know, it, it doesn't take much um, because a lot of people in this industry are in it because of a love of artwork and a love of art in general and a lifestyle um, and they're not necessarily in it because they're making a load of money yeah. so so for that reason there's lots of people who were who are working from one gig to the next and surviving from one gig to the next sometimes they're up sometimes they're they're not so up so it can just be a matter of a, a few months uh, and you know they can't pay the bills they're struggling uh yeah they, to keep their businesses open and things like this so uh, it yeah it's been really difficult for a lot of people and i i i'm just grateful i'm super lucky i'm i'm really lucky in as much as my partner her her work's been um you know that we can rely on that that's um yeah. Uh, and, and that's, you know, we're able to support our family. Um, and I'm really lucky with the people that I work with as well at the studio and things like this. Um, and also working with people like Sean Clark um, uh, from from Interact Digital yeah. Arts. And he's, you know, he's used this as a, uh, I, you, know, you know, he's he's really um, worked hard at this point in time to 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 secure things for artists and yeah. to, and to continue this work and to support people in a in a very practical uh, way. Um, I'm really thankful to Sean for what he's done for us here. Um, and yeah, is, and, yeah, yeah, it's and I know not everyone's got that. I, I, yeah, I, it's important to have people like that, and and I know that not everyone is in such a good situation. I mean, some people have you know. Uh, I've done, you know, there's there's people that have done quite well from this situation. You know, it, it's presented opportunities for people, uh, in, particularly in business, yes, um, and and things like this. Uh, but for the vast majority of people, this is an extremely negative thing, and it's going to uh, impact us and continue to impact us for a very long time to come. Uh, and you know, getting through that, the only way to do that is to sort of I guess close ranks and look after you know people within your communities, and uh, and I'm grateful to see that in uh, certainly in the arts community and certainly within Leicester, that effort's been uh, phenomenal, um, mm. and I'm I'm really grateful we've got that here. Yeah, you know I also I found myself you know working with visual elements, uh, and then there's also the uh, the applied arts as well. You know how, when you you know, what is its purpose? Are you helping people who, you know, I've done workshops for the deaf where we brought massive subwoofers into this place so that mm. people could experience low frequency vibrations, people who couldn't hear with their ears, but they could still yeah. hear with their body. And, uh, and you know, it could be therapy, it could be education. So, yeah. it, the, you know, the world of art is big and it has applications in lots of areas. And I've spent 
a lot of my time jumping in and out of all of these different areas. But when it just to go back talking about, you know, this idea of providing a service and having a function and having yeah. va value in society. Well, one of the ways that I've looked at it in the past when I've been mm. feel, when I've been feeling particularly critical about my value and purpose in life is there's lots of people out there doing horrendous things to make yeah. a living. <laughs> you know, there's uh, people out there who are producing weapons that are being dropped on yeah. families and children uh and you know they go back home you know put their netflix on kiss their kids put them to bed and their life is okay it's not knocking on their doorstep so everything's fine because it's putting money in the bank it's feeding yes. my, it's feeding my children it must be doing some good in the world and that and, and then they don't necessarily think about the consequences of their actions yeah, of so course. so sometimes maybe doing nothing is better uh and, and maybe that has more value than some of the jobs that people do in the world and the the, the other aspect of it is what is the goal where are we going with this what is the ultimate goal you know if we do replace all of the menial things what what can we retain in, t in terms of function and purpose and and, I, and it really boils down to very few things. I, and, and in my mind, what can what will we always be doing? What will always be our job or our task or our calling? Mm. It, for me, it would always just be to care for each other. Yeah, that, that's a fundamental thing that we're not going to replace with robots. It's you know that's never going to disappear. We're, we're always going to need to you know bring up our children, look after our elders. This is we're always going to need to care for people in society, and that's always going to happen. And aside from that, it, it's you know, is it okay to just live? Mm. Is it okay but to you know? Is it is it is it a value just to be? a human that you know needs to eat and sleep and maybe take a walk and maybe talk you know maybe make some music do some art where, what you know what's the highest pursuits and and where can we take this and what you know if we if we do reorganize society in a way in which people aren't having to do jobs that are dysfunctional uh, mm. job jobs that aren't delivering on improving life you know, the, the job isn't about putting money in your pocket uh, yeah. anymore. It, a lot of these jobs uh, are, are, uh, are sort of thrust upon you because you're just born into a society in its current state and you have no choice and control over it. What is the point in working all these hours if, you know, you have no time to enjoy the things that you've accrued, the things that you've uh, you know the money you've created or the objects that you own you know yeah. and what what is the what is the point in sitting in in a car for hours at a time in a traffic jam uh just to go and make a few pennies or whatever i, I in, so for me i've the, and i think this is the pandemic thing as well i've been thinking a lot more about what am i doing on a day-to-day -day basis what activity am i engaged in and you know does that bring me some uh, comfort or happiness does it help me does it help the people around me does it hurt me does it hurt the people around me you know so I have just to say that it's always a pleasure to talk with you but uh, yeah we need to keep <laughs> I, it short <laughs> I have just to say goodbye <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah and so Thanks a million for having shared also your, not only your work, but now also your experience and uh, experience like artist and experience like person because you are living in this long lockdown and it's important to, to have someone that is a witness also of this experience and that also uh, it's always interesting to just to stay here and listen your point of view because I'm sharing your your vision unfortunately i'm a negative a pessimistic person so well if the anyway future, if, if the future generations are watching this wondering on what what people did and what happened during the pandemic yeah. um it was a mixture some people really realized what was going on and a lot of people didn't um and i'm sure there's things happening right now in the future that uh that require our attention and 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 people aren't giving it and 
uh, yeah, and we, we really we need to come together and start fixing some of these issues. Uh, just from uh, a perspective of enriching lives, making the quality of life better for people mm. as a whole. Uh, you know, I, despite the lack of resources and things, I think, you know, uh, what was it? Charlie Chaplin said, the good earth is uh, rich. Um, you know, there's uh, there's there's plenty of uh, to go around if we share it properly. Uh, and the, it's uh, at this stage, it, it isn't too late. Um, but yeah, we have to pull our finger out, don't we, if we're going to do something about it. <laughs> yeah, probably when uh, your kids, they w will see this uh, in the future, this video, they were thinking, oh my God, what happened? Yeah, you were so, all worried about this virus and then climate change. <laughs> yeah, and nothing happened. Probably everything will be fine. I don't know, really. I hope so. I really hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, or just life, uh, it, it will be different. So probably uh, their generation, uh, for their generation, everything will be fine. I don't know. They will find a way to survive in this uh, in this strange world for me. Uh, and anyway, I, I, it was really interesting and it was a big pleasure. And I'm so delighted to have uh, uh, your voice, your story in uh, in this program. So thanks again. Uh, Thank and, you very uh, much. I hope really appreciate you... the opportunity. Yeah, and and your patience as well. Um, it's much appreciated. Thank you so much, and hope to see you in the reality. I don't know when. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know really what is, when what it what is reality? possible. I don't know. Probably this is we are just living in a matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll see you again uh, in the ether uh, online or something. <laughs> yes, of, for sure. So cool. thanks again and see you soon. <laughs> see you later. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>